In this episode of the Taylor series, we're going to discover an algorithm that will allow us to subtract natural numbers. If the numbers are small, we can just count. If we have 7 minus 2, that means start at 7 and count down 2, giving us 5. But what if the numbers are big? Well, we're going to need to come up with some way of organizing so that we can get our heads around this. Thankfully, we have a way of doing that with our positional number system. Instead of having one giant pile of stuff, let's chunk these things together into piles of 10, which we'll call tens. Now we have another problem. We have a lot of tens. So let's repeat the process, taking chunks of tens into what we'll call hundreds. Well, this seemed to help because now we have a small pile of ones, a small pile of tens, and a small pile of hundreds. And there's no reason we couldn't continue this process for the thousands, the ten thousands, or anything beyond. Now, if we wanted to subtract away some other quantity, we could group the blocks again in the same fashion. Normally we would represent this quantity with a number, but for right now we're going to get some mileage out of the block representation, so let's stick with it. Now that we've got everything grouped up, we're going to subtract. We're going to subtract ones from ones, tens from tens, hundreds from hundreds, and if we had more, thousands from thousands, and so on. With the ones in this case, it's kind of like what we did in the very beginning. We have 7 minus 4, which gives us 3. But the tens seem to be giving us a problem. We have 3 minus 6. Well, what we can do is we can take one of the hundreds, pull it apart into 10 tens, and combine that with the 3 tens we already had. This gives us 13, and now we have 13 minus 6, which is 7. Now we do this one last time with the hundreds blocks. We have 4, and we're subtracting away 2, leaving us with 2 hundreds. And so this is our final answer. We have 2 hundreds, 7 tens, and 3 ones, or 273. Let's look at the process we just did and try to figure out what things we need to keep track of. Obviously, we need the numbers, and we need to keep them in a particular order, not just within the number itself, but also how we stack them up, so that we're only subtracting away like things, that is to say, ones with ones, tens with tens, hundreds with hundreds, so on. We're also going to remind ourselves what operation this is by putting it here. Now, let's do here with the numbers what we just did with the blocks, that is to say, let's subtract the ones, giving us, again, three. Again, we need more value in our tens place, so we're going to take one of the hundreds, call it 10 tens, add it to the three, and now we can do the subtraction where we get seven. Finally, we're going to subtract the hundreds from one another. And now you can see our final answer, 273. But not so fast. We have to answer a couple of questions. Does this scale up? That is to say, let's take this example here and see if we still are able to subtract with it. Subtracting the ones column leaves us with three ones. Subtracting the tens column leaves us with no tens. We'll just put a zero there. The hundreds column seems weird because we have zero hundreds and then we're trying to take away three. But if you think about it for a moment, we're just gonna do the same thing. We're going to take one from the thousands column, split it into 10 hundreds, and then add that to the zero that's already there, giving us 10. Then we're simply going to subtract three hundreds away from the 10 hundreds, leaving us with 700. The thousands column is very similar in that we're going to take one from the 10,000 column, split it into 10 thousands, add it to the one that's already there, and then take 9,000 away from it, leaving us with two. However, when we get to the 10,000s column, we realize that we don't have anything left to subtract. This is okay. We would expect something like this, because it turns out that the answer really is 2,703. There is no 10,000s place, nor should there be if you think about it. Okay, so this process scales. That's good. We've also addressed many of the cases where we might see zero show up and maybe throw us for a loop, but there's something else here that we need to consider, and that's the case where we try to take something larger away from something smaller. What if I try to subtract seven away from three? We do get an answer, and that answer is called negative four in this case, because we can count down past zero into the negative numbers. Let's just take a moment here and appreciate what's just happened. Numbers are ideas and we can take those ideas and apply them to any situation in the real world for which they make sense. Well, does it make sense to have negative numbers in the real world? Can we ever have negative of something? Yes, it looks like we absolutely can. Outside, it is negative one degree Celsius. Okay, you might object, because it turns out that we're talking about temperature, which in some sense is an arbitrary construction. That is to say, we pretty much invented the scale that we measure temperature with, and we called it Celsius. But there are other scales that don't have negative numbers. For example, Kelvin. If you were to measure the temperature outside in Kelvin, you would not get a negative number. But this illustrates a point. In a sense, when we go to measure things, whether it be temperature or distance or your bank account, hopefully not that, you can go negative and it can still make sense. We do put zero down somewhere and that's okay. That just means that we find it useful to put zero there. In the case of Celsius, 
it's the freezing point of water. The utility here is that we've now invented a new kind of number, the negative number. Let's take a look at the thing we invented. Starting with the natural numbers, which are the positive whole numbers beginning with 1, sometimes beginning with 0, but we're not going to consider that right now. What's really interesting is that when you go to represent situations, you don't know which one of these numbers you're going to need. The situation is going to tell you. So if you consider picking any of these two numbers at random to represent some particular situation you've got, it may be the case that when you subtract them, you get a natural number. But it may be that you get a negative number when you subtract them. And that's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to call it something. In this case, we're going to call it an integer, and they look like this. The integers are represented with a Z for the German word Zahlen, which means number. In a future video, we're going to recast subtraction as a very special kind of addition on the integers. But for right now, that's enough for this video. Thank you to Aragami for hosting this episode, and thank you to my patrons for helping support me in this. I couldn't do it without you. And congratulations to you on successfully reaching the next term in your own Taylor expansion. I'm Derek Taylor, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe. If you really like the video, come on over to our Patreon page where you can get involved and see all the cool stuff we're doing.